taking a step back when it comes to uh, emotional maturity. It just, I, I don't know, I, I, it's just strange. Any other secrets you want to share with me? It's all like. Hey guys and uh, welcome to the All Black Book. You really know what time it is. We're doing part two of uh, Married at First Sight. We are doing um, uh, Keith and Iris and if you have enough time we might jump into the Jamie and Elizabeth. But let's talk about Keith and Iris. Um, this, you know, I, 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 mm, eh. Whatever can help us grow in that intimacy, I'm willing to do. Looks good, kids. Yes, Iris. That's it right there. Now you wanna... The first thing I noticed was something that was interesting for me. When they were doing the, the dance, uh, before they got into the dance, when Keith was standing there, again, I think it's now Keith's problem. It's no longer Iris' problem. I believe Keith has got an intimacy problem. Um, in a sense, he's starting to withdraw. Um, and why do I say that? When I was watching them, uh, before, when the instructor was talking to them, um, Iris has no problem being physically touchy-feely in front of the instructor. Watch her, she goes around her, da, da 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 And I'm not sure whether Iris is doing that because she's nervous about what's coming or whether she's just so comfortable with Keith that- Keith and I have decided to recommit and keep pushing forward in our marriage. I've been trying to take Dr. Viviana's advice and open that door to sexual intimacy. It won't be too hard for you, but the main thing is to know to have fun. Um, so I just want to make sure we're both ready when that time comes. So I feel like taking this silk dance class is a step in the right direction. She's doing that. Bearing in mind the last few weeks, you know, um, you know, I've seen them be touchy feely, and she's always one that kind of initiates the first move. I believe her love language probably is physical touch, but physical touch doesn't always mean sex. It means in terms of she communicates or understands love in the physical realm. So in the last few episodes, I remember there was a time where she put her feet on him um, when they were on the sofa, and that same episode, she came into the bedroom and jumped on him. Um, so that was also interesting, um, and then I believe as well they were sitting on the couch. I think after the the fight with the friends about the the drink, the lemonade juice that she said is our lemonade or whatever, you know they were being physical then. So what I've noticed is that Iris is very comfortable with being physical. It's not a problem, um, and this is probably the first time I've seen it that I think they're physical in front of somebody else um, because they weren't physical, they weren't touching or close in proximity. Um, beforehand in front of other people but today in front of the instructor Iris breaks that breaks that mold and actually she starts you know um, putting her arm around his waist going around him and just being quite physically physical touching um, but Keith does not respond Keith stands in the same place almost acting as if she's a kid going around him and I found that quite interesting I, I was wondering is he starting to withdraw bearing in mind last episode he spoke about the fact he's fearful of this um, virginity is he starting to withdraw now that's my question. Um, so that was what I was starting to think. Interesting enough, obviously they enjoyed themselves with a dance. Um, I love that Iris threw herself into it because if it's not your natural thing, it's not easy to jump into something that you don't naturally do. So I must congratulate Iris on that. And when you're in a relationship, I've always said this, in relationships, you must be ready to do what you might not, might not necessarily like, but you do because you love the partner you're with, because they like that. And there's a reason for that, because, you, because love is about sacrifice. In fact, the Bible says that there is no greater love than for a man to lay down his life for another man. You know what I'm saying? And that's talking about Jesus Christ laying his life down for us. The Bible says that he sent his only son to come and die for us, his only begotten son. So deep it, love is about sacrifice. And so the Bible says a man is like Christ. He's meant to lay his life down for his wife and love her first before she loves him. And that's another topic in itself. But talking about this issue, I mean, <coughs> it's interesting, <coughs> it's interesting that as well, um, that, you know, in, 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 a, in a relationship of Dion and Greg, I mean, Dion, sorry, Dion, sorry, Iris and Keith, you know, when they were dancing and stuff, they were looking very intimate, very cool, you know, Iris was enjoying herself as well, I think it was a, it was a chance for her to be free and broken. <laughs> I became a spectator for this a second. I don't know if Iris is feeling any closer to having sex. Yeah, get your breath, back it up. This job. But with all the grinding that Iris is doing on me, how can you not get in the mood a little? From the constraints of that attitude that I'm a virgin. They were really, really close. Um, really, really, um, you know, really, really close. Very, very, um, I guess, uh, flirty, physically touching, like, you know what I mean? All over each other, and it was quite nice. Um, which obviously then, I guess, stemmed from the fact that they obviously had um, the the session before where they were doing the kissing and the touching as well, they, they had started to breach certain levels and she started to feel a bit more comfortable with the physical contact, which is sexual. 
And, you know, it's good to see that. We're breaking the molds now. I'm not, this is what I was saying about having the virginity. It's like, don't hold the virginity to a point where you're frigid and everything. You are in marriage now. You held the virginity for a reason, for marriage. You're now married. Let's start breaking the molds of virginity. And that doesn't necessarily mean in terms of having sex. But let's start being sexual. When I get that feeling, I need a sexual healing, sexual healing. You need a bit of that feeling, you know what I mean? You need a bit of that, that touch. And that's what we're seeing now from, um, from Keith and Iris. And it's good to see. Um, but we'll come into that. It was interesting that when they spoke to, obviously, the professional, um, they mentioned about the fact that... When was the last time you felt like Iris was vulnerable with you? Uh, I think that's something we're still working out, maybe. That, you know what, when have you been vulnerable? And Keith mentioned that, you know what, he doesn't feel like Iris has been vulnerable. And, you know, they did a task where they did a, the secret later on. And the secret was, obviously, for Keith, was non-existent. It's like, that's not a secret. Like, that is some lame-ass thing. And again, it's like, where's the emotional maturity he's saying? I must also counterbalance this and say, I understand why Keith is saying what he's saying, but he also must be careful. That might be a secret for her. She might not have experienced certain things, so that just might be a secret for her. But I understand why he may feel like that was an immature kind of thing to be saying, as, as in you swallowed a penny and nobody knows that. But that just might be her. You know what I'm saying? So again, I give that flip balance. Whenever you're in relationships, be careful that you may think it's a certain way, but you have to ask the other person, yo, I'm going to be real to you. From my angle, I don't know if that's actually a secret. Like, I'm talking about something a bit more personal, a bit more deep for you. Like, you know, tell me something. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's something. So it's interesting that, you know, <clears throat> Iris hasn't lended that side of her. She hasn't released that emotional side of her. And I think, again, it, again, it's about, sh look, we do things to protect ourselves. Our mind does things to protect us. And so for me, if Iris is not being emotionally vulnerable, there's a reason why she does not want to get hurt. She's new to this and she thinks that this is going to lead to her hurt. And I think there's a, there's a, a healthy but an unhealthy respect for the fact that someone could hurt her. But you must understand, relationships are a risk. You are opening your heart for somebody to walk in and potentially trash your heart into two or into, 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 into pieces. You're giving that person access into you. It's like giving somebody a key to your house. They potentially can come in and rob you. You know, they potentially could do that if they wanted to. But you're trusting that they love you, so they're not going to come and do that. And I feel like Iris hasn't allowed Keith in emotionally. And he's sensing that. Um, so it's not just the virginity. And I always said this, the virginity comes with a naivety sometimes when it comes to emotional release. I was riding home on the school bus and I didn't have anywhere to put my change. So I was like, okay, well, I'll just put it in my mouth and I'll just spit it out once I get out the bus. So I put the change in my mouth and we hit a bump and I swallowed the quarter. Yeah, that's really embarrassing. I, I swallowed a freaking quarter, like, Hearing Iris' secret is a little confusing because uh, this is an activity I'm trying to take seriously so that we can know each other on a deeper level. Hmm. But yeah, that's a secret. Not many people know that because that's just... Sometimes the reason why us people release our emotions is because we have baggage. Someone's hurt us in the past and we have baggage to release. And it feels like Iris maybe potentially hasn't gone, hasn't gone through that. So maybe her releasing emotional baggage or releasing emotional things necessarily doesn't play on her mind because she hasn't got anything emotional per se deep going through her head. Maybe. I'm only speculating. Let's just make this very, very clear because some of you commented down below last time. I am not saying to not be a virgin. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm not saying don't be a virgin. You should be a virgin. Don't get it twisted. What I am saying is don't let your virginity become a sense of pride. It's ugly. It's ugly. The same way someone holding saying I have sex with bare people as pride would also be ugly. Holding a pious, a pious view of yourself is also ugly when it's mixed with pride. And so what we're saying is not virginity is bad, virginity is good. Do you know what? You're a virgin. Meet another virgin. Clean slate. You have nobody to match up against. You've got no priors. Do you know how amazing that would be? I would love to be a virgin and meet another virgin. Because that would then mean none of us know what sex is really like with someone else. It is the Adam and Eve effect where we don't know any better. But because somebody knows, ooh, god damn, you know, like, I'd even deep that, you know, 
that Adam and Eve are like virgins. And until they eat the fruit from the tree, they don't know no better. They only know each other. You understand? There is no, there's no scare, there's no fear of being vulnerable to each other. They're, they're, they're naked in front of each other and feel no way because they've never seen anybody else's nakedness. They've never seen anyone else's baggage. They've never encountered anybody's madness. And so therefore, there is a complete trust between the two. But look at here, there's also a naivety there. But, sim but obviously, if, when we come into relationships, often we are not, we are not vulnerable. We are not naked. We are, we are carrying so much stress, drama, pain. We have seen things and though therefore when we come and encounter somebody else, it's hard to mesh together. And so therefore that's why I say to you that it's hard for somebody who's not a virgin to date somebody who is a virgin because their mind has been seared, their mind has been opened to the forbidden fruit, has been opened to the tree that we should not eat from good, good, and, from good and evil. You understand? So now we know what this is, this sex is. Now we know that when we get into a relationship with you that this is what sex is. We can't take our time because we like sex. Number two, also we've experienced sex from someone else and we expect it, pre if it's good sex we had previously, we expect it to be that way. Do you get me? I mean, I want to round up with Keith and Iris. Um, you know, I think Keith, as he stated obviously to his mum, is he happy? He's not sure. He's, listen, he's going to, I believe potentially he could quit this relationship. I think Iris's development hasn't come off come, hasn't come off quickly enough, and I believe he will potentially quit the relationship because her development in terms of other areas, not just the sex, is more a case of her her behaviour hasn't come across quickly enough, and therefore, for her and uh, for him, sorry. It's, it's not, I've been, with a, I've been with a virgin before, so I know like their naivety and what you have to teach them in, in terms of emotional stuff, in terms of dealing with other people as well. Like sometimes it's difficult and sometimes it's hard to go through that. So I can understand why he feels the way he feels. Um, it's not easy, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not a straightforward thing. Um, it's not a straightforward thing. So, I mean, I look at it from that point in case and say, look, okay, Keith is trying. But I don't think he's going to continue to the end. I think Iris is too, it's too fresh for him. And that's what's going to probably potentially kill it for him. That's my opinion. How long we talk for? So yeah, guys, that was part two. Uh, make sure you like, share, subscribe. Let us know your thoughts down below. Uh, we're going to now talk about um, Jamie and Elizabeth in part three. So join us for part three. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. Appreciate y'all. You know what it is, baby. Uh, are you Maddie Maddie Lean? You ain't got the minerals, baby.